Hello again and welcome to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing the section on forms. So I'm going to back back out to our Access database as I usually do and now we're looking at that continuous form that we were working on in the last episode. We need to address a serious problem here. That is the address type field here, this text box, is tied currently to, in our query cust address with type, is tied back to table to address types. And there we can see address type. Okay. The problem is, is that if we change something on our form, where we're changing address type here, what that's going to end up doing is changing address type in table to address types. And that's not really what we want, and I'll show you here. If I open up our, uh, if I open up the form here and I change office to ship to, save it, and notice that when I clicked somewhere else, it changed all of them to ship to, where they were office. And I'll show you the reason why. If I open up table two address types, you can see ID one has been changed to ship to. That's because I just changed changed office to ship to. So I need to change it back. But that doesn't really help us. I only wanted to change it on the one. And now we notice <laughs> it's back to office. This is not the behavior that we want. We want to be able to have somebody in some way select one of these address types, office, ship to, or bill to. And then where we want that data actually stored is back in table one addresses under address type underscore ID. If we look at the query, uh, the query cust address with type, which is what the form is based upon, we can see that address type ID is available for us to add as something to display, uh, you know, as a select for our query. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And now that adds it to the, uh, to the fields that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, close it. And then I also need to close the form that that query, is, um, or the form that is based upon that query. I'm going to click no. I don't want to save any of those changes. And the reason why you want to do that is because for some reason in Access, if you're going to make a change to the underlying source of a, f of a form, you have to also close the form uh, so that those changes will be applied when you reopen the form. All right, so I'm going to go back in here into the designer. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I want to go into the designer for the form. All right, here we go. So how can we make this basically an option based upon this table to address types instead of allowing them to just type in something? Now, probably the most obvious direction to go with this is to change it to a combo box. And there's actually a very quick, easy shortcut here. If I right click on this, I can go to change to and then combo box. And that automatically changes the text box into a com combo box instead. That's a lot handier than deleting the field and then going up here to the designer and then selecting combo box and adding it to our, our, um, into our design view. I'd rather not have to do all that. I could just right click, go to change, change to, and then just select the combo box. Now I need to change the source. Remember that we have a control source here. I need to change the source from address type to that field that we just added to the query. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to save it, we're going to view it, and we see that we get ones. And obviously that's because back in our table one addresses, that's what is in that field, right? Address type underscore ID is one. So how can we make that a little bit more obvious? I mean, right now, one doesn't mean anything to them. We want this combo box to actually show something, and we want them to be able to select that something, and then have that something get put back into our table one addresses, as the numerical ID that we get from table two address types. That's a lot of stuff that's got to happen, and we got to program all of that into our form so that it's user friendly. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into our form. I'm going to go into the design view, and I'm going to go and click on this and go back over to the data tab. And you'll notice that there are two different sources. There's one called the control source, which we already know, and then there's something called the row source. Now the row source is essentially what is going to be displayed to the user 
as an option for drop for that drop down box. You know, when they click on the arrow, what are they going to see? So for my row source, I'm going to click on the ellipsis on the right hand side here, and that's going to open up a query window. Now this query window, the information that I want to show to them, can be found in the table to address types. So I'm going to add that table to our query and close it. I'm going to add the ID field, address type, and sort order. Okay. Now the sort order, if you recall, is back in our table to address types. We gave a numerical value to help us identify in ascending order how we want those different options to be viewed. Which one do we want to show first, second, and third? So by changing sort order to a sort of ascending, I will now make it so that our rows appear in the order that I want them according to the sort order. And you'll see that in action here when we actually apply it. Now I also need the ID field because along with the address type that we want to display to the user, we also have to give the combo box a value to return back to the table, okay? Or some way that they can select from this drop down, some way of identifying that particular selection. And that selection is based upon the ID. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Yes, I want to save it. And you'll notice this option called bound column, okay? The bound column is based upon the row source and which column is the one that we have selected. The first one, one, is ID, two would be address type, and three would be sort order. So I'm going to say that I want bound column one because that's going to, that means that essentially whatever the user selects from the drop down, the value that comes back will be from the ID column, the first column that is in our query here. All right, I hope that makes sense. That's kind of complicated, I understand, but just trust me, you want a bound column of one, which is tied back into the ID that comes from table two address types. All right. Now I'm going to go over to the format. And in the format tab, we have some options here. And I'm going to show you real quick what this currently looks like so you can see. We still have an op we still have a problem where we only see a numerical value. And if we click on the drop down, that's great we have numbers, but numbers alone don't tell the customer or the user which option they're actually selecting. Even though I know that one is office, three is ship to, I, I think it's ship to, and a two is bill to, or whichever order these are. I may know that number one is office, but there's no way for them to know. That's the whole point of a combo box, to give them some sort of way of seeing what their options are. So I'm going to go back into the design view again. Oops, I hit layout view. Okay, design view, here we go. I'm going to click on the drop-down box, go to the format tab, and you'll see this option called column count. Right now it's set to one, which means it's only showing one of the columns from our row source, which again was the ID field. So I need to change the format for column count to two. That way it shows the ID and it shows the address type, which is the text. Remember, in here, we have the text, the address type, which shows up as office, bill to, or ship to. We need that to show up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it so that both of them show up. Now when we view it, we still have a 1 here, and we'll address that in just a second. But if they click on the drop-down, notice that now it says office, bill to, and ship to. So we're much, much closer to our target. Now we at least give them something to select from. But we can actually go one step further than that. If I go into the design view one more time, and I change the column widths, on the column widths, I'm going to give it zero inches for the first column, which makes it not visible. I'm hiding it, so it's not going to show up. Then I put a semicolon there, and this is optional, but I go ahead and give it a one also, one inch. Uh, I say it's optional because if I left it blank, it would just use whatever remaining space is available in, in the dropdown in order to show the column to the second column. 
I'm going to go ahead and say it's one inch. All right, now I'm going to save it. I'm going to click on View, and there we have our beautiful drop-down combo box that allows them to select between the different options. I just changed Smiles Incorporated to Build To, right? Now if I go back into our Table 1 addresses, we can see Customer ID 1 has been changed to Address Type 3, which is exactly what we want. And just to show you that this has been stored, I can close out of it and reopen the form, and we still have Bill 2 as the address type. Okay? I know that was really complex. I know that was a very uh, long and difficult thing to kind of go through. I hope I explained it well enough for you to understand. If you have any problems, I really highly suggest that you re-watch this video. Make sure you understand it because these types of little things and, and tricks are going to be the tools that really make your user interface pop and give you that, that extra thing that you're going to want to make it as simple for the user to use this form as possible.